we want to look at the way human beings uh, do cognition or thinking or intelligence, uh, intelli intelligent activity and so on. And we want to, we have already said that, you know, the kind of stuff which is shown in, in this larger circle here now is this logic and representation and planning and, and reasoning and search and so on and so forth. So, for humans, symbolic reasoning is the major part of the uh, cognitive load that we have essentially. So, we can distinguish now between AI and machine learning a little bit that AI, even though actually it encompasses machine learning, uh, because ever since AI started, machine learning was kind of part of it. Uh, symbol, in AI, we are concerned with symbolic knowledge representation and problem solving. In machine learning, we can say we are more focused on making sense of data. So, either we are getting from in extracting some information from data, for example, for big data, recommender systems, predictive analytics, or we are doing classification for the examples that we saw, you know, deep learning images or even language. But the core of human cognitive abilities is the ability to model the world uh, and reason with it. So, when you say model the world, we say knowledge representation uh, very often. And what we mean by that is, uh, what does the agent know? And when we say that, we are talking about declarative knowledge. So, like you can think of it as a collection of sentences in some language. Not, not implicit procedural knowledge, not for example, knowledge about how to ride a bicycle or how to tie your shoelaces or something like that, or even not tacit knowledge, you know, which is kind of somehow you know that something is going on in the company, but you do not really know what is happening there. We are talking about declarative explicit knowledge and uh, we want also want to talk about that if an agent knows something has some knowledge in its repository, what else does the agent know? In the sense, what are the kind of inferences that you can make essentially? So, inferences can be of different kinds. For example, they can be plausible inferences. So, for example, if you see clouds in the sky, you may say that it is likely that it would rain or it could be like uh, uh, deductive inferences. So, for example, the famous uh, Socratic argument which said that all men are mortal, Socrates is a man. Therefore, it is necessarily true that Socrates is mortal. So, these kind of inferences are called deductive inferences. The other kind of inferences are called plausible or probabilistic inferences if you are working with probabilities. But in any case, being able to represent the world around you and being able to make inferences from what you have represented or what you know is a fundamental ability needed for intelligence. So, when you talk about rep representation, explicit representation, we are talking about symbolic representation here. A symbol is something that stands for something else and we have already mentioned that earlier. For example, the number 7 can be represented in different ways. So, you know, people have distinguished or discriminated between or, or differentiated between numbers and numerals, you know, because numbers is a concept essentially. And in fact, Michael Opitz uh, apparently uh, once was asked by somebody, what do you want to do in life? And he said that, uh, I want to know what is the number that a man may know it um, and a man who may know a number. This was of course quite some time ago and he was told that he will spend his whole life doing that. So, numbers are of course very abstract concept. Just try to imagine how you would define what is a number. Of course, we can do that. Uh, nowadays with pianos, axioms in logic and so on. But in general, it is not so clear as to what do you mean when you say number 7. But we, all of us know that if we write a symbol like this, then we know that we are talking about the number 7. Or if we write just a set of English characters, then we know that we are talking about number 7. Or if we write Roman numerals, then we know that we are talking about the number 7. Or if you are a statistician and you write something like this, then you know that uh, you are talking about the number 7. All these are different representations of the common concept of number 7 and it is not even clear to us what we mean by a number. Though it is clear to us when somebody says that I have 4 apples, we understand perfectly what is happening. But when you say what is 4, then it is so, it's not so easy for us to uh, describe that. But numbers are not the only symbols we use. Uh, road signs, for example, curves, pedestrian crossings, schools, U-turns, eating places. If you are driving down a road, 
you would see all these signs and they have uh, they represent something for us the meaning of a symbol is a socially agreed upon concept there is nothing intrinsic about the the meaning of a symbol essentially so so when we have when you have drawn this symbol for example there is nothing to say that it's talking about the number 7 it's just that between us we agree that this stands for the number 7 in in a particular script that too so it is a socially agreed upon construct but symbols are what we use all the time essentially so shakespeare said for example a rose by any other name would smell less sweet will smell less sweet so he's i mean we take from there the fact that the fact that we are calling it a rose does not contribute to its sweetness so all languages both spoken and written are semiotic systems so the semiotics is the science of symbols as we say and there is a kind of associated science called biosemiotics which says that how complex behavior emerges when simple systems interact with each other through signs so when we look at the human brain we can think of it like that because you know there are millions or billions of simple neurons interacting with each other and yet we have the human brain which some people have called as the most complex piece of matter in the whole universe but there are also uh, things like trails left by ants these are called pheromone trails we will visit them briefly when we look at an algorithm called ant colony optimization but these are chemicals which ants leave when, wherever they are going and those chemicals are used by other ants to follow their trail and that's why you can see ants marching very in a disciplined manner, manner towards some food you may have left on the table other animals use other ways of communicating through symbols or chemical symbols what do we mean by reasoning by reasoning we mean formal methods of reasoning manipulation of symbols in a meaningful manner and we are familiar with this kind of algorithms as we could call it addition multiplication of multi digit numbers and so on essentially so many children learn how to add for example five digit numbers 10 digit numbers or multiply five digit numbers 10 digit numbers we have a whole process of doing it but not everybody for example uh, uh, conceptualizes what's really happening essentially so for example if you are multiplying two numbers then we first multiply with the units digit and write down the product of the so we have uh, some number let's say 3974 and we are multiplying by 29 so when we multiply by 9 we write some results here but when we multiply by 2 we start one portion on the left so we write this is shifted by one why is that of course we have learned this as a process or as a procedure but only when you think about it that you are saying that that 2 really is not 2 but it stands for 20 and to conceptualize that is not what everybody does and things become more complex when you look at things like Fourier transform or convolution of images with the point spread function and so on. So this is just trying to give a whole map of what is happening. Uh, people often com confuse uh, automation with AI but what I would like to say here is that while there is certainly an overlap between automation and AI in the sense that a lot of automation can use AI in particular if you look at self-driving cars then they, they benefit from the work in pattern recognition, speech processing, classification because then self-driving cars should be able to see the world around it and classify things. So definitely there is an overlap uh, but there are also things like train reservation systems uh, or online shopping uh, I mean forget the recommender part of online shopping but the very fact of implementing online shopping does not have much to do with AI essentially. Uh, also I would like to place the fact that ML is just one of the components in AI but it is definitely part of AI and there is some amount of confusion about data you know, data is it statistics data science or is it statistics or is it AI or is it machine learning there is a little bit of machine learning and AI there as well. So this is just to place everything in con context. So next we look at some history and philosophy.